Hi, welcome to Come to Think of It, a program where we talk about things that matter. I'm your host, Casey Scott. My guest today is once again, Roger Lockhart a highly respected addictions counselor, and we're doing the fourth in our series of programs on the nature of addictions. Uh, Roger, welcome to the program. Thank you, Casey. Great Glad to, to be here. Great to have you back. Yep, good to be uh, back. Always a pleasure. I, w we have talked, um, l last time we were talking about um, the differences between the, the problem drinker and the alcoholic. Mm -hmm. and, and that whole spectrum of, mm -hmm. uh, of use, abuse, and, um, and, and addiction. Mm -hmm. And uh, in, in the course of that discussion, you said something rather tantalizing um, about the broad range of addictive technologies. So what I want to do first, uh, before I get into that, I want to just sort of back up a little bit and, and, and ask uh, again, Mm -hmm. We've been over this territory, but I want to ask you again, why technology? Um, well, I use the word reluctantly just because of the fact that it has a kind of a cumbersomeness to it. And people, I think, uh, pretty much inevitably and very reasonably think of gears and uh, machines mm -hmm. and levers or hard uh, software hardware, software, that kind of thing. The, the word in its rich and original sense means to manipulate, and I think there is something to do with uh, you know, hands-on manipulation, but the essential notion is of some kind of a managerial manipulative utilization of something to an end. Hmm. And uh, as you're aware, I understand addiction as, be, as being a way of controlling, that's that key word of manipulating, managing things on behalf of what in this conversation we've called a shortcut to fulfillment or a shortcut to existential adequacy, that kind of mm -hmm. concept. There's always some kind of a medium, some kind of modality through which this control is exercised. That modality then is the technology or technologies. The, the, the ironic uh, piece of that, I think, is that um, the technology is, uh, or the, the, the use of the technology is an attempt to maintain control or gain control, and the effect is to lose control. Eventually. Eventually. Although, I, I should say this, um, uh, and a lot of people, and I, I don't know if I've mentioned this in this conversation, but a lot of people really lose track uh, of the fact that in the natural history of addiction, of a given addiction, yes. the first part is a uh, rousing success, mm -hmm. uh, ranging from pretty darn good to awesome S and spectacular. Spectacular, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Now that can last for years or even decades. Mm. The yeah. One a, a person, an entity, can find that their addictive solution is just really quite satisfactory, mm -hmm. thank you. Well, at, at, absent that success, then there would be no addiction, right? Well, yeah, there what has would to be, be the an point? initial enticement yes. that draws yeah. you in. Sure. Why would you do it the second time right. if the first yeah. time didn't give you? So, um, uh, yes. The, the addiction can be successful in some cases throughout a person's life. So I'm, I'm wary of uh, uh, embracing the idea or advocating the idea that it, every addiction ends in disaster. Mm -hmm. If you live long enough, it does. <laughs> but some people, that might need to be 120. Sure. For sure. most of us. <laughs> It's a much shorter period. Well, that also that, <coughs> that will become clearer and, and, as we uh, go on in this discussion and, and broaden the discussion, as what, what, I, what I want to do today, to broaden that discu mm -hmm. the discussion of addiction into something that uh, is going to be unfamiliar territory to a lot of people. Mm -hmm. And the, the, that notion of, uh, of enduring success then is, I think, a lot of what impedes that understanding. Mm. Uh, mm -hmm. So, um, 
So what are the, um, other than the, the ability of, of this technology to provide that shortcut uh, uh, to whatever that existential uh, fulfillment is, uh, what would be the hallmarks of an addictive technology? Uh, the one, obviously, the one that we're most familiar with is, is alcohol, uh, followed close behind by, by drugs. Uh, but there is an, a broad range of things that we'll be talking about. So what are the hallmarks of, of an addictive technology? Um, parenthetically, I have to say that I have a, uh, a, a pet peeve about making the distinction uh, or rather, uh, speaking as though there were a distinction between alcohol and drugs. Okay. <laughs> and um, I, I'm fairly sure that you're not dedicated to that distinction. No, not at all. No. You're you're uh, picking up on the conversation, the public conversation that routinely does that. Uh, I think we do ourselves a grave disservice because basically what we tend to be doing there, I think, is kind of whitewashing alcohol. Mm. Saying, well, there's you know, there's alcohol, there's alcoholism, and then there's drug addiction. Whoa, now that's really. And as well, it it seems to me that many of the other addictions, the, the so-called behavioral addictions or whatever, uh, mm -hmm. however you want to characterize mm -hmm. that, are also drug addictions because uh, the substance that uh, that we're addicted to has our own brain chemistry, uh, and that's very clear to me as well. So, well. Uh, now you've uh, brought up a subject that I don't know if we want to take this path right now, but I actually find that the term addicted to is problematic. And uh, I don't think this is going to catch on. I don't think this is going to be uh, 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 somehow incorporated into the title of a best-selling uh, book. Well, let's see. But <laughs> I think very often I mean, we are addicted to things. There are physiological addictions to yes. things. And by and large, that's pretty straightforward. You're right in suggesting that it's, it gets more exotic when you get into the brain chemistry and stuff like that. I'm loath to say we're addicted to that, but maybe that's the case. But what I find is perhaps a more adequate, if uh, unfamiliar way of of expressing it is that we get addicted with things. Hmm. That our addiction accumulates around perhaps the use of some chemicals, uh, perhaps other behaviors. And I pause there because you will find that almost always, even the addictions that seem to be a straightforward chemical addiction, I'm addicted to alcohol, I'm addicted to heroin, I'm addicted to pot, I'm addicted, that in fact these all virtually all have behavioral, interpersonal, um, ritualistic kinds of components that are, to a greater and lesser degree, really impart important parts of the uh, of the addictive payoff. Mm. To the point where, uh, for example, I've known of alcoholics whose addiction so. Uh, 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 absolutely was connected to drinking in the bar. That, you know, they would be in withdrawal rather than sure. resort to drinking in any other setting. That sure. was just, that was And where others they who didn't drink drinking. alone at home. And, and on and on and yes. on. Sure. Uh, yeah. And there's the, the story of the junkies that will shoot up saline solution if they can't get their hands on heroin because the gesture of putting the needle in and mm. so forth gives them a rush, gives them a, a part of the fix. Sure. And in fact, I have actually um, gotten some pretty impressive results, and this may get me in trouble here, but um, with uh, clients who've had addictive relationships with pot, to try the experiment of rolling an imaginary joint Mm. And I have to go through the whole thing in quite some detail. Sure, yeah. I think this is germane to our conversation about technology, so if you don't mind, I'll... No, 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 go ahead. Yes, ...walk please. us through it. Yeah. You know, I, I do it in such a way that the visualization, the imagery starts to become quite vivid, you know, to take the bag out of their pocket and... Uh, crease the paper. Cre crease the paper and then, you know, spread the, the weed and then roll it up and lick it 
and seal off the tips. And then, you know, get the match or the lighter or whatever you used and get it there. Carb, what do they call it? Carbonated? <laughs> Not carbonated. What the? Letting the air in. Yes. Carburation. Yes. Yeah. Hold your breath as long as you possibly can. <laughs> and then let it out. And I, right. it actually stretches out three or four times. Sure, that. sure. Yep. <clears throat> if you have a history with pot and you do that, you'll find yourself visiting an approximation of the consciousness. Absolutely. That that pot would bring. Now, there's no, this is just air. There's no, no but there's ritual. THC, but the power of the ritual yeah. to engender the fix uh, is astounding. Yeah. I knew a fellow in, in New York City, when I lived in New York City, who rolled an absolutely perfect joint. It looked like a little miniature cigarette. It was so perfect in every respect, and he would did it in great detail, mm -hmm. with great precision. It was it was rather astonishing, actually, <clears throat> but it was part of that whole experience. Yes. Very right. much part of that experience. Right. So, um, I started when I kind of veered off, uh, wanting to say that even the chemical addictions aren't just chemical. Addictions. Oh no, no. Well, I said I said uh, in an earlier in a pro earlier program, I think that. To characterize addiction as a bad habit is both profound and profoundly misleading. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, um, okay, go, go, going on from that, um, you said something earlier before the program uh, mm -hmm. when we were talking. Um, you made a comment about the the the, um, the principles of addiction and recovery being very simple, but the complex uh, mm -hmm. not being so simple. Can you uh, go into that just a bit? Because mm -hmm. I think there, there's, there's, a, there's a feature here that I think is going to be very helpful. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I think you're right. Um, well, I mentioned in our pre-show conversation that that particular uh, formulation of describing them as both simple and complex, both addiction and sobriety, um, that those, that language um, was uh, expressed and is expressed in the overview section of my website. Mm -hmm. And uh, given the possibility that I might not uh, represent these concepts with exactly the thoroughness that I did on that section, I invite viewers to check out the website, which is, I think, which will be in the shows credits, at the yes. end of the mm -hmm. credits, yeah, yeah. Um, and look for the overview section. Um, and there I make a comparison in the case of addiction with DNA, mm -hmm. uh, where uh, we find that only six chemicals constitute DNA, and of course DNA uh, uh, is the is the instructions for the uh, composition of everything from I remember saying dandelions to dinosaurs, mm -hmm. uh, bacteria to ba Barry Manilow, <laughs> etc. Uh, so similarly, in the case of addiction, the um, the fundamental factors that are involved in the equation of addiction are, I believe, five. And let's see if I can recall them. First of all, there's the idea that human beings have an exceptional, compared to all other life as we know it, are aware of it, we have an exceptionally uh, powerful, engaging uh, experience of self. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying we have any kind of unique thing Right. Uh, on that experience. All I'm saying is we have it to an extraordinary degree in uh, the prologue of, of my book that's also on the, on the website. Uh, I surmise that that has a great deal to do with language, which allows us to picture our self. Yes. 
historically mm -hmm. in, the, in the past or in the future. Be that as it may, however it happens, we have a very powerful experience of self that we value very highly. We may not value ourselves very highly, right. but we experience, we value the experience sure. very highly. Okay. Um, we are also filled, number two, we're filled with longings. We have a deep uh, yearning for fulfillment. Mm -hmm. And our relationship with that striving to achieve fulfillment profoundly qualifies, uh, shapes our experience of self. Um, uh, additionally, I'm not, I don't know if I'm going to get to five in this particular listing, <laughs> but uh, we, oh, like any sentient creature, and we've talked about this here, we're very fond of shortcuts yes. that seem to take us into these states of fulfillment mm -hmm. um, more expediently than ho-hum life. And uh, as well, and I don't think I'm up to five, but we'll, we'll make it work, we have an extraordinary ability to devise shortcuts. Mm -hmm. And that ability has, uh, has amplified exponentially over the years. I'm doing this from the angle of the camera, sure. the classic uh, hockey stick graph. Yep. In the last, uh, I'm going to throw this out as an estimate, but in the last uh, 50 years, the the degree of change and the pace of change has changed, has uh, uh, exceeded the rest of the history of the human species. Sure. Uh -huh. And yeah. and that rate is still... Plotted uh, ex exponentially, it's a straight line, which, yeah, is, exactly. which means that it's going off the charts. Unsustainable. Yeah, right. unsustainable. Right. right. So there are many implications to that. Yeah. Uh, and... and um, I'll just mention now, I know that it is your interest and, and mine as well in future programs to go on at, at, in some detail in exploring how addiction plays, uh, from my perspective, a central role in that exponential Absolutely, yeah. mm -hmm. uh, acceleration. But right now, um, we want, you wanted to be talking about addictive technologies, and you asked me uh, what uh, what are the features right. or the characteristics of an addictive technology? And uh, in the pre-show conversation, I said to you, um, it's very hard for me to imagine, in theory at least, any kind of behavior or activity that isn't susceptible, potentially, to uh, becoming entangled in an addictive equation for some people. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, I'll, t I'll, this is, uh, 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 a foolish uh, example in a sense, not foolish, but, uh, uh absurd, mm. but it makes the point some decades ago in a Midwestern state, a, uh, which had a, a law at the time requiring that if the state police stopped anyone for a traffic offense, they were required to ask if the person was carrying any pornographic material. Um, and in this particular instance, much to the officer's astonishment, this uh, very embarrassed gentleman acknowledged, yes, he was carrying pornographic material. And the a tr trooper was then obliged to say, well, you need to show it to me. And so with great hu you know, sense of humiliation, the gentleman got out of the car, walked to the trunk, opened the trunk, and there the trooper found a great stash of ashtrays. Yes. <laughs> not erotic ashtrays. Yes. That is to say, not erotic to you or I. But for this gentleman, somehow ashtrays had taken on the significance of having a, an erotic or libidinous charge. Yeah. So, if you can be addicted to ashtrays as an erotic <laughs> focus, subject, what's off the list? Yeah, not, not much, yeah. not much. 
the, the, the so what what we're talking about then is not uh, not the features of an addictive technology, but the features of an addictive relationship to a technology. Exactly. And um, exactly. So I, I made some notes on on some of what that might mean. Obviously, the the technology has to be able to provide for that addict the the shortcut that we're talking about. Mm -hmm. um, but then it, beyond that, the, the relationship, uh, and you talked about this in, in a previous program when, with a, um, a fellow whom you called, um, I can't remember what the, what the name was, the... the, the, uh, the admissions. The, the the, yes, the drunk who's not, a, who's not an, an alcoholic. Right. Um, I don't remember the name I used either. I, but in any case... I remember his name. Hank. Hank, Hank. was the name. Okay, yes, okay. good. Uh, but... Um, one of the, th th there were two things that did, that Hank did not have. The, the, the one was that, that the, his relationship to alcohol had not overridden his reasoning process. He's able to make a decision. His intent and his behavior did not diverge. Exactly. Yeah. And, and the second was, that, and, and the result of that was that he did not experience powerlessness, powerless, right? Exactly. And I have a bone to pick on the word powerless, too, but we'll get to that. That works for me. Uh, the, um, the second thing was that he was as much himself sober as he was drunk. Exactly. So, so in a way, Casey, excuse me for interrupting. No, go ahead. But yes. in a way, you could see those as the external and internal uh, uh, aspects of the same event. That is to say, the existential solution, pretty much by definition, is an internal event. Mm -hmm. Yes. It's then externalized when one displays or not the uh, the uh, the uh, disconnect between intention and behavior, mm -hmm. or that word powerlessness. That I agree is problematic. Is a tricky one. Yeah. So, yeah. My problem with, with powerlessness is that um, it, it's not exactly accurate in the sense that uh, there's something controlling me. Um, what, what happens, and as I, I prefer to call it a lack of agency. Uh, mm. In other words, the, the, the ability to make the decision has been impaired. So that I no longer, uh, if if I have powerlessness, I am I am no longer able to make the decision to abstain from that ad addictive relationship with the freedom that uh, I had at one time, or that other people have. Well, I'm even crankier than you are about the word powerlessness. Oh, please go ahead. <laughs> um, <laughs> I like the drift of where you're headed, but I, I think I take it a, a step or two further along those lines. Uh, for one thing, I'm hugely fond of words. It may come with the territory of having the name Roger, <laughs> but um, I know what powerless means. And uh, as you suggest, one of the pretty suitable synonyms is agency. And I know that uh, we don't become powerless unless we're literally passed out or something yes, like that. Yeah. But uh, one could build an, a semantic argument that would be quite legitimate that would say that addicts, in fact, exercise more power in relation to the object of their addiction than practically anybody else. Uh, I, I could have tremendous effect on my drinking when I was an active drinking alcoholic. Um, it, I couldn't insist on it being successful, much to my frustration and dismay. But boy, I could sure have an effect. And that's, the, you know, power is a synonym for energy. The definition of energy is the ability to do work, mm. effect change. Sure. Um, so you then go on and you talk about agency in terms of effective choice. Yes. Choice that actually takes you where you want to go. Yes. Rather yeah. than down the stairs or... Um, the choice is the choice is made. I make the choice. 
right. but how freely do I make that choice right. and, and w w with what considerations? But then we go on and we find that in the population of sober addicts, uh, very often we find a, a, a cadre of people who are saying that the notion of powerlessness still applies to them, although they haven't had a drink in 20 years or mm -hmm. two years or whatever it may be. And what are they alluding to? Um, and I have, I have observed the notion of powerlessness to be meaningfully applicable in sort of three categories. Uh, the first I had personal experience of, and that is when the addiction has such an absolute grasp of the, um, uh, which you might call the discretionary center of the person, the choosing center, yes. that the person finds in the most vivid possible way that their intending has become essentially irrelevant. And in my particular case, it was in uh, watching my body turn and open a cabinet and take a bottle out and pour it down my throat when all of my intending faculty was saying, no, 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 we're getting out of the house first. We're not gonna be sober. We're getting out of the house and walking four blocks to the package store right. so that I can get to work. Yeah. Because uh, I knew that if I started drinking again in the house, I wouldn't get to work. So it's like, just getting out of the house. But with that intention unchanged, I watched my body turn, open the cabinet, take a bottle of it, okay? Now that's powerless in the very literal sense of the word. Mm. My agency had been co-opted by, by what? Well, that, that, you know, by the addictive center within myself is one way to say it. But that thing that I called me was, was no longer in the driver's seat. So there is that version of powerlessness where literally you cannot make an effective choice at all. Mm -hmm. A lot of people go through their entire addictive career and never have that vivid an experience. Mm -hmm. They might look back and say, you know, effectively I had that, but it wasn't actually that experience. Right. But if, so if we, if we parse out what that experience is not quite so uh, surreal, we find that they have uh, an experience that might be said to be, um, I am unable to have a relationship with, let's say, alcohol that works. I am powerless to have a relationship with alcohol that works, mm. especially if we appreciate that doing this it's is very much in a relationship. Right. Um, but again, um, okay, so we're not doing this, we're sober, and yet we talk about powerless, many sober addicts will talk about powerlessness as a significant feature of their, their life, their sobriety, and so forth. And uh, over time, what I've come to is uh, what feels like kind of the, the very heart of the matter. I'm powerless to achieve fulfillment through control. Now, that really hits addiction where it hurts. Yes. Because addiction is based on the exact opposite premise, that through some mode of control, I will achieve uh, optimal, existential status. Mm. Which brings us exactly back to where we started this discussion uh, today, and uh, that's appropriate since we are out of time. Oh I'm, my goodness. Yes, and I'm not that's halfway right. halfway to where I wanted to be today, so um, hoping you'll come back another Absolutely. time and we'll do this Look again. Forward so, to yes, it. thank you very much, Thanks Roger. For having me. And uh, thank you for joining us on Come to Think of It. Hope you'll be with us next time. Until then, Drive cheerfully, I'm Casey Scott.